It looks like Young Miami is on the run after being named in Diddy's indictment papers by federal prosecutors. Homegirl has been trying to distance herself from Diddy since Cassie dropped her lawsuit, and it's like she's been trying to make us forget all about how she and Diddy went together real bad. But while she was doing her whole rebrand thing, the universe hit her with an Uno reverse card because Diddy just got indicted on federal charges by a grand jury. And the streets are saying that she was featured heavily in the lawsuit, especially when it comes to certain spicy bedroom activities involving baby oil, if you catch my drift. Well, it looks like Miami is not waiting around for Diddy to go to jail. Word on the streets is that she has gone deep underground because she knows that the feds are coming for her next. Y'all, this is a hot mess, but let's break it down. Child, I just know Miami is somewhere wishing that she never got involved with Diddy because this case is starting to be more trouble than it's worth. Before Diddy got exposed, she used to brag about how she was never going to leave him or let him go and how she would be his ride or die. But it looks like she bit off more than she could chew because she keeps getting named in Diddy's lawsuits. And to make matters worse, some of the things she said in the past are coming back to bite her in the behind because her own words are kind of tying her to Diddy's crimes. For example, in Cassie's lawsuit, she claimed that Diddy would allegedly pimp her out. She also claimed that Diddy allegedly had madams who would help him pick out S workers and other women for him to SA in what he referred to as freak offs. The feds made the same allegation in their indictment against him in front of the grand jury. And according to the legal documents, Combs and other members and associates of the Combs enterprise wielded the power and prestige of Combs's role at the Combs business to intimidate, threaten, and lure female victims into Combs's orbit, often under the pretense of a romantic relationship. Combs then used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sex acts with male commercial that Combs referred to as, among other things, freak offs. It continued. Freak offs occur regularly, sometimes lasted multiple days, and often involved multiple commercial sex workers. During freak offs, Combs distributed a variety of controlled substances to victims, in part to keep the victims obedient and compliant. Sometimes, unbeknownst to the victims, Combs kept videos he filmed of victims engaging in sex acts with commercial sex workers. After freak offs, Combs and the victims typically received IV fluids to recover from the physical exertion and use. When this came to light, fans immediately put two and two together and suspected that Miami might have allegedly acted as one of the facilitators of the freak offs. Now, there's no hard evidence, but it seems like Miami once threatened Diddy's other side piece, Gina Hun, with what sounded like a freak off. A couple of years ago, Gina Gina and Miami got into it on social media because they were fighting over Diddy. Fighting over a man who sleeps around is definitely a choice, but these two have fought on social media a couple of times because of Diddy. Anywho, on this one occasion, Gina posted a picture of Diddy kissing her on the cheek and Miami lost her cool, accusing Gina of being thirsty for attention. She said, Gina, you've been down bad ever since I came into the picture, ho. You've been crying for a baby for 10 years. You've been around as a bee that eat P and D when he feel like it. You a eater. You the same bee that was crying on Tasha K because you wanted a baby. Poor sushi. She continued, you want a baby B? I have career ho. You a certified freak. You haven't heard from Diddy since the awards reminiscing on getting rid of babies. Let that hurt go, Chun Li. If I wanted you to eat me, Diddy would have had you on your knees. You a eater. Be you a munch. Yeah, kind of sounds like a freak off, especially with the threats of Miami forcing Gina to be SA'd by her and Diddy. That got Miami dragged for weeks with people saying that she was complicit in Diddy's actions. Even if she didn't directly take part in the freak offs, the streets were saying that she could have known what was was going on, but she chose to turn a blind eye to it. Hey, their words, not mine. It got worse with Lil Rod's lawsuit where he claimed that she was allegedly transporting substances for Diddy. You know, if Diddy wanted some two seat, he knew who to call. According to the court documents, plaintiff and the Combs Rico Enterprise were rehearsing for something in the Westival in Virginia. The court filing reads, plaintiff Jones personally witnessed Mr. Combs do a few lines of nose candy in his dressing room. Defendant Sean Combs wanted two seat, but Brenda forgot it, so defendant Christina Quorum called Young Miami, who then brought it on a private jet from Miami. The document went on to say that young Miami, Jade, and Daphne Joy were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs' S workers and received payment via wire transfer from Robin Greenhill, which outlined defendants ongoing criminal operation. So it looks like Miami could have been in deeper than we knew. And with Diddy's new indictment, well, things are only about to get worse from here. For those who don't know,
know, Diddy was recently indicted on federal charges. CNN was the first to reveal that the feds were pursuing an indictment against Diddy a couple of months ago, saying, federal investigators are preparing to bring accusers of music mogul Sean Diddy Combs before a federal grand jury. Two sources familiar with the probe tell CNN, signaling the U.S. Justice Department is moving toward potentially seeking an indictment of Combs. They went on to say that possible witnesses have been notified by investigators that they could be brought in to testify in front of a federal grand jury in New York City, according to one source. Bringing individuals who have filed civil lawsuits against Combs before a grand jury would make a significant escalation in the government's ongoing investigation involving the producer and Bad Boy Records founder. While the jury voted to indict him and child, the charges are bad. I'm talking bad, bad. The legal documents expose Diddy for allegedly manipulating and threatening women, forcing them to be intimate with him, as well as subjecting them to physical violence. The document said, physical violence by the defendant was recurrent and widely known. On numerous occasions from at least in or about 2009 and continuing for years, Combs women by, among other things, striking, f***ing, dragging, throwing objects at and kicking them. These incidents were at times witnessed by others and including one instance at a Los Angeles hotel in or about March 2016, which was captured on video and later publicly reported, where Combs kicked, dragged, and threw a vase at a woman as she was attempting to leave. When a member of the hotel security staff intervened, Combs attempted to bribe the staff member to ensure silence. Combs's violence was also not limited to these women. It extended to his employees, witnesses to his and others. For those who don't remember, the incident they're referring to in this section is that footage of Cassie that leaked a couple of months ago where Diddy put paws on her in a hotel. There were speculations at the time that the video was leaked on purpose by the feds and it looks like there might be some truth to that. We by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of a against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video, captured on multiple cameras, shows Combs a his then-girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. A lawsuit filed by Ventura in November last year and settled the next day referenced actions that seem to map. And if you're wondering why nobody spoke up before Cassie, it's because Diddy allegedly threatened them into silence. The document said, members and associates of the Combs enterprise, including Combs security personnel, at times carried firearms. On more than one occasion, Combs himself carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten others, including victims of and witnesses to his in or about March 2024, during searches of Combs' residences in Miami, Florida, Los Angeles, California, law enforcement seized firearms and ammunition, including three AR-15s with defaced serial numbers, as well as a drum magazine. It also said, when employees witnesses to his or others threaten Combs' authority or reputation, Combs and members and associates of the enterprise engage in acts of violence, threats of violence, threats of financial and reputational harm, and verbal these acts of violence included kidnapping and arson. In addition, on multiple occasions, combs threw both objects and people, as well as dragged, choked, and shoved others. To put into perspective just how much trouble Diddy is in, a high-profile PR specialist gave us this breakdown of the case. This is the extreme of what we see in our investigations, our takedown investigations on True Blue with, you know, predators who come into our stings. This guy is the ultimate groomer, according to this indictment, allegedly, if all these allegations are true. He set it up, he had a fantasy, he couldn't resist this fantasy, he had to fulfill it, and he had the means and the contacts, the power and the money, the access to pull all this together. Now, here's a guy who's a mega music producer. A lot of people depend on him for their celebrity, their success, everything else. So he holds a lot of this power over their heads. Then you introduce the the alcohol, the drugs, uh, the, the notion that if you go along with this, you're going to be someone. The notion that this is just part of this out there extreme lifestyle that we have in this business. And it became acceptable in his mind. And so the fantasy becomes reality. And then you have this major event that is likely videotaped. So the predator being Combs in this case, can relive it and show it and brag about it and experience it over and over again. It is so typical of a, of a predator. Then a lawyer gave us a breakdown of how the case is likely to play out in court. Uh, the government generally, you know, approaches these individuals. They say, hey, listen, you can either be on, you know, <clears throat> the defendant side uh, of the case, which we'll be more than happy to add you to this racketeering charge, or you can be on the state side or government side of the case 
and we would give you immunity for X, Y, Z. Um, why you saw different things coming about. Uh, he also revealed that a lot of people who were involved with Diddy's shenanigans have turned on him and are now cooperating with the Fed. Uh, my understanding is, is that there was a lot of individuals that were involved. And I think by looking at the indictment and seeing that only Sean Combs is the only defendant currently, who knows if, if that increases and, and it gets superseded with a different indictment. Uh, but currently there's only one defendant. Uh, my guess is, is that all of those individuals that could have been co-defendants or could have been co-conspirators or could have been involved in a RICO case um, have flipped on Sean Combs mm. and they're getting some sort of immunity. Now we gotta wonder if Young Miami could be one of those people who flipped on Diddy. Cause if we're being honest, that man was a menace. The documents also hinted at how freaky Diddy was, saying that the feds seized about 1000 bottles of baby oil from his residence. Well, the streets are now saying that Diddy and Young Miami allegedly used some of the baby oil during one of their, you know what sessions. And given how tight Diddy and Miami were, plus the whole freak off business, it's not surprising that the streets are now speculating that Miami might have gone into hiding because she doesn't want any part of this. Her social standing is already shaky enough. And if she gets roped any deeper into this, it's game over for her. Fans commented, Diddy had 1K bottles of baby oil and lubricant. That boy, a big A freak, probably had Young Miami in there looking like a honey bun. Young Miami being a baby oil bottle girl is insane. Meek Mill and Young Miami drenched in baby oil to compete against each other in Diddy's freak off. And the feds disclosing season 1000 bottles of baby oil from Diddy's mansion is just somehow. Like, where is this endorsement deal? bro you didn't just buy all of that because of three years of freaky parties did you anywho y'all drop your thoughts on this in the comments then check out this next video